A warm welcome to your Mobilis Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, April 19. Parliament today approved an extension to the state of emergency as the island tackles a new wave of COVID-19 cases. Health and Wellness Minister Ian Gooden Edjo, who piloted the resolution on the Emergency Management Act, said the state of emergency will remain in effect until September 22. Even though we continue to relax measures and we continue to manage this um, pandemic, I want to give the House the assurance uh, that this resolution that is before us, which is a, will extend the state of emergency until the September the 22nd, um, is something that we have to do. We have to do it because we are uncertain what will happen out there. We don't know tomorrow if there'll be a more significant strain out there that could compromise Barbados and its population. So for that, and for, for, for that reason, we have to um, extend the, uh, the state of emergency until September. We probably have a better feel of what's happening there. Minister Edgell assured government will remain on top of the situation even as he urged Barbadians to get vaccinated or boosted and stick to the protocols including mask wearing. There has been much concern about the government's mask mandate, especially from tourism stakeholders, and Edgell assured his ministry is open to hearing concerns. He updated the House on recent talks with the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association on the matter. Last week, we had a meeting with the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association that went well. I explained what had happened in respect of the current situation. And I said to them that we should regroup and, and have continued dialogue, and we've agreed to do so within the next four weeks. Meanwhile, Home Affairs and Information Minister Wilfred Abrams today cleared the air on a new directive, which stipulates that people who fail to wear a mask in public could be fined $100. The measure applies to a public building, public place, or while traveling on a public service vehicle or other public transport, whether as a driver, conductor, or passenger. Abrams told Parliament that prior to the amendment, the offense was one for which an individual could be arrested and charged as much as Barbados $50,000. And to remove the, the possibility of getting a criminal conviction, although the law still has the law has not changed. The law still says that if you do not wear your mask, you're liable on a summary conviction to find a $50,000. It has a proviso that where this occurs, the police can issue you with a notice. We call it a ticket, a notice, saying that you have to pay a fine, a fixed fine, so the, the, the leeway is removed. You don't have to worry about $50,000 if you tow this line. You pay a fixed fine of $100 within 14 days, presenting yourself to the clerk of the, the, juris, the, the, clerk of the magistrate's court for the jurisdiction where the offence occurred. You pay the fine of $100, and that is the end of the matter. It does not affect your record. It does not appear on a certificate of character. That is the end of the matter. So I think a lot of the public did not actually understand that there was the possibility or the threat of a $50,000 fine. And what I'm seeing and what we've been hearing is a lot of people believe that all of a sudden last week the government instituted a fine of $100 for people not wearing a mask. This is not an upscale, sir. This is a serious tone down of what obtained prior to last week. Now for today's COVID-19 update. The Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 302 new COVID-19 cases, 132 males and 170 females from the 840 tests conducted on Monday. The cases comprise 54 persons under the age of 18 and 248 who were 18 years and older. There were 86 people in isolation facilities, while 2,830 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. This is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new 
flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. To regional news in Trinidad and Tobago, it was a mixture of fear and excitement as over 200,000 students returned to face-to-face -face classes for the start of the new term. More on this report from TTT News. Students from the early childhood care and education centers, primary and secondary schools, and tertiary level institutions are back for in-person classes, some for the first time since March 2020. Some parents who spoke with TTT News expressed concern about their children's safety at school in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. My son and some mingling with students today is very difficult because he's only in standard one and he really doesn't inter inter intermingle with children. So him coming out today, I am kind of scared. I trust the Baratari Anglican. I, I know they're trying and I... I know we'll have to help them along the way as much as we can as parents, but um, I think as long as this virus is around and my son, is his age group hasn't been vaccinated, so that in itself is a bit challenging. Some mothers said they will vaccinate their children when pediatric vaccines become available for the 5 to 11 age group. Other parents remained apprehensive and some children were eager to return to the physical classroom. One father with his sons attending both primary and secondary school said his younger son was elated to head back out. The little one in particular who is seven years old, he is so excited, he started jumping up this morning and he is ready to roll. So it feels really, really, really good and it feels more, even more good to see him, how happy he is to come back out. Students in Tobago will return to school tomorrow, Wednesday. On the international scene, at least 15 people have been killed in bomb attacks in Afghanistan's capital. The blast took place near two educational institutions in the west of the capital, Kabul. Explosives detonated near this school as children were leaving their morning classes. Several people are dead and children are among the injured. We are close to the school. I quickly came to the site when the first blast happened to see if everything was okay. I went to the top of my house to see what was going on. There was a crowd of people over there. I was standing on the roof of my house and called my children to enter the home. Suddenly, the second blast happened and I got injured. The victims are members of the Hazara, a Shia minority group. Their community and this neighborhood have previously been targets of ISIL attacks. The governing Taliban says the security situation is under control, but analysts warn that violence may be on the rise. The most important thing that we have to talk about and we have to consider is the fragile nature of the security. It can easily be disrupted. It can easily be put in danger, as we have seen today. So therefore, I think a lot has to be done on the part of the Taliban to, to, to provide a full-fledged security to the entire population of Afghanistan. But it is going to be impossible for them because if you see the, the economic uh, hardship, the disenfranchisement, and the public discontent that is growing with, with every passing day, all those things combined to, together, I think it is going to be really difficult for them. Back at the school, security forces arrived to seal off the area. The Taliban has been cracking down armed groups since it came to power in August. But this latest attack is a reminder that security remains one of its biggest challenges. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.